So now that the dust has settled with the far out event that happened in September and the new iPhones that came out and the Apple Watches, it is officially iPad season in my book, everybody. So you might not know this about me, but I use my iPad Pro as my main computing device for pretty much everything that I can throw at it. I use it for things as little as iMessage and email and Slack messaging, all the way to thumbnail creation, video editing. So every video you see on this channel is edited fully on the M1 12.9 inch iPad Pro. But then I also use it as my main game console. So I use the Xbox controller to game on it with Apple Arcade and NBA 2K. And then I also use it as my content consumption machine. So that's why I always tell people, you know, don't sleep on the iPad Pro. Yes, it's a little bit different than Mac OS and there is a little bit of a learning curve, but this thing can be your computer, your gaming device, your content consumption machine all in one. So when you think about it from a price perspective, it's not that crazy that this thing starts at $1,100. Now, yes, I am the first person to tell you how disappointed I am that Apple kind of retracted their secondary monitor support feature from the 16.1 beta updates that have been releasing since WWDC back in June. And there's also some other features that Apple touted that were gonna come by the end of this year, like Freeform, like the pro-level applications, like the collaboration feature inside of iPadOS 16.1, and we're still not seeing any of that in the beta updates. But having said all of that, there still seems to be a new iPad Pro right around the corner that should be announced in the coming days, and I'm still very, very excited about it, and here's why. So Mark Gurman recently mentioned that iPads should be coming out very, very soon and in the next coming days, actually. And in this tweet, he was mostly referring to new iPad Pros and then even a new 10th gen iPad that should be coming out alongside of the iPad Pros. So in this video, I wanted to break down what to expect with the iPad Pro lineup as well as that 10th gen iPad, which we'll release alongside of it. And we're gonna talk about that one as well because that one is actually going to be a nice little upgrade. So let's talk iPad Pro and what to expect with it first. So the only thing that we know for certain really is that it will bring the new M2 chip inside of the iPad Pro. 18 months ago, we got the M1 chip in the iPad Pro and it wowed everybody. Everybody started to think that, hey, since we're getting the M1 chip, it's gonna actually bring Mac OS or some sort of version of Mac OS Lite or at least desktop class applications like Final Cut Pro and Adobe Photoshop. But again, the M1 iPad Pro really didn't change the experience if you were coming from an A12X or an A12Z, which were the 2018 and the 2020 iPad Pro respectively. But by adding the M2 chip in the iPad Pro, we will get a boost in CPU and GPU, just like we saw with the MacBook Airs and that M2 upgrade. So it'll increase by 20 and 40% respectively on the CPU and GPU side, which will be better for video editing, for photo editing, for some light gaming and things like that. Even some heavy gaming, honestly, on the iPad Pro. But outside of that spec update, there really isn't anything else that we know for certain. And I think that's why I'm so excited because for years, we've known exactly what we were gonna get from an iPad perspective. You know, we knew exactly when the new industrial change was gonna happen in 2018. And then in 2020, we knew that we were gonna get a new camera bump and a new camera sensor. But this year is the first year that we don't really know too much aside that we're gonna get a new iPad. So I do wanna talk about some rumors that could come to light. So the first rumor that I wanna talk about is that we might get some sort of MagSafe or wireless charging or some sort of magnetic component on the rear of the iPad to accommodate for new accessories that are gonna be releasing for the iPad Pro. We did see a tweet by Parker showing and illustrating what this new like HomePod magnetic dock could look like for an iPad Pro. Honestly, in theory, it looks very sleek. It looks cool. Like for me, I would probably buy one because I already have an iPad Pro. But if this like HomePod accessory for the iPad Pro is gonna be only for the iPad Pro, I don't see a lot of non-iPad Pro users lining up to buy an $1,100 iPad Pro just to use a smart home speaker at home when there's so many other options at a way more reasonable price point. But that is something cool that could be coming out and it could be not only a home dock to be put in your kitchen or something like that, but it could also be kind of like what Microsoft did where they included a speaker that was also a hub for their desktop computers. It could be the same thing, but for the iPad where it will have an HDMI port or a USB-C port on the rear and it turns it into kind of like a hub that can be used with external monitors and things of that nature. So let's see how Apple really touts this new speaker system if that is something that they do bring to the iPad Pro. I've also seen some renders of the Dynamic Island making its way over to the iPad Pro, which Hear me out, I know some people might not like that idea, but I think it could be for a good reason. So I did post a Twitter poll. If you guys do wanna follow me, it's right here. If you guys wanna follow me, at Nando Prince. And in this poll, I asked people what orientation they use their iPad Pro in, or any iPad for that matter. And for the most part, most people use it in landscape mode. So why the Dynamic Island makes sense is because I am one of those people that uses their iPad 100% of the time in landscape mode on the Magic Keyboard. Adding the Dynamic Island would allow for the cameras and the selfie camera to move into the correct orientation. So when you are in Zoom calls, in Google Meets, even in FaceTimes, it looks a lot more natural when you're FaceTiming with the other person instead of 
looking off to the side. And then adding that dynamic island would also allow the ability to lessen the actual bezel size on the iPad Pro, which is already pretty slim, but you can slim it up a little bit more while still giving enough room for your fingers to lay on when you are holding the iPad in a regular tablet mode. But then also it will allow Apple to keep the orientation of where the magnetic charging is for the Apple Pencil 2, so nothing really changes aside from the camera and Face ID moving into the landscape orientation. And who knows, maybe with that being the dynamic island, if people use it in portrait mode, it could be kind of like a controller that you use with your thumb if you are holding it in portrait mode and maybe you can use it as a slider or a multitasking bar or something for quick access that you can use with your thumb in portrait mode, which is something that I do think Apple could implement relatively easily and seamlessly at the same time. And then another reason why I think they could bring the dynamic island over the iPad Pro is because they want to keep some sort of uniformity when it comes to like the silhouette. So if you guys noticed, on the iPhone Pro line of the 14 Pros, they added a new silhouette to their Apple Store, so you know which one is the iPhone 14 Pro and which one is every other iPhone that has a notch. So they could do the same thing with the Pro lineup of iPads so they can kind of keep it in that own little silo of Pro model things. So having the dynamic island there in its own silhouette compared to the other iPads which will have a uniform bezel throughout. So again, that could be something else that Apple does just from a kind of brand recognition standpoint and from a Pro model recognition standpoint. And then there's also a rumor going around that Apple would add another pin connector to the iPad Pro lineup. And the main reason they would add that is so data pass through could happen with certain accessories. So again, with that HomePod docking accessory from Parker, maybe having a fourth pin connector would allow for some sort of data pass through and allow that hub to not only be a speaker, but also be a video out or an audio out to a certain monitor. Same thing goes with the Magic Keyboard, because right now you have the three pin connector, you can charge it via the Magic Keyboard, but A, you can only charge it, it charges slowly, and B, you can't do any data pass through. So that's another thing to keep in mind, but it could change up what it works with in the future. Will you need a new Magic Keyboard if you buy this new iPad Pro? Will you need other accessories that have a fourth pin connector for that matter? So it might get people upset, but in the long run, it could make sense to kind of expand the ecosystem of accessories for the iPad Pro. So again, that's the reason why I'm excited because right now there's so many things that could be true about the iPad Pro that I kind of want it to be true. But at the same time, we can kind of have a flop and nothing really gets added besides the M2 chip. But again, that's what brings the excitement back to me where it's like, hey, I don't really know what's gonna happen. So it should be fun to see when Apple does release this iPad Pro exactly how they're going to market it to us as a new game-changing iPad that you need to get. So again, the only real things that we know for certain are M2 chip is gonna be in there, new 5G bands are gonna be in there to accommodate new 5G speeds and different towers and it's of 5G, so there's gonna be some extra bands in there. And it's gonna keep also the same shape and structure that we've had over the last three, four years now at this point since the 2018 iPad Pro. And then let's quickly talk about this new 10th gen iPad because I think it's gonna be a nice little game changer and finally some uniformity across the entire lineup of iPads. So firstly, this is gonna be the first year that Apple actually changes the look, feel, and chassis of the entry-level iPad. So for the longest time, it stayed true to the homage of the original iPad, you know, the same kind of wedge shape design that was originally released back in 2010, but this is gonna be the first year that Apple now brings that same industrial design and chassis down to the entry-level iPad. So it's gonna have those squared off edges, it's gonna be able to stand on its own if you balance it correctly, it's gonna be that industrial design that everybody seems to love about the new iPads. The only difference with this iPad is that instead of having some sort of face ID or touch ID in the lock button and having uniform bezels across the board, this 10th generation iPad will be a flat back and have those kind of cornered edges, but the front of it is still gonna be the same footprint and form factor as the old one. So it's still gonna have a big chin and a big forehead, and it's still gonna have a physical home button with Touch ID instead of having Touch ID on the lock button. So imagine if like the iPad Air made a baby with a 9th gen iPad, and then that's what you would get for a 10th gen iPad. And in terms of what hardware is gonna be new to it, first, with that new design, we're probably gonna have some new Apple Pencil 2 support, which will be great. And another reason why I think Apple Pencil 2 support is gonna have to be a must is because we are getting rid of Lightning on this one and doing USB-C. So now the entire iPad lineup will be USB-C, but if you don't have a lightning port on the bottom of an iPad, you can't use a first gen Apple Pencil. So that's why I think Apple Pencil 2 support will be added to this new 10 gen iPad. And then also we will get 5G capabilities. So if you want a 5G capable entry level iPad, that is going to be coming to the entry level iPad. But a bunch of questions that I still have about that iPad is A, will we get some new screen technology? B, will it still have pin connectors? Will we still be able to use older accessories like that folio keyboard thing that was compatible with the entry level iPad of the past? Or will it be compatible with a Magic Keyboard? But at that point, if it's compatible with the Magic Keyboard, then you're spending $300 on an accessory for a $350 product, which in my mind doesn't make financial sense. At that point, get an iPad Air, get an iPad Pro, and go that route. But who knows what Apple's gonna do, but this is gonna be the new king of scholastic iPads moving forward, especially here in the US.
But that is pretty much all we have when it comes to expectations on the iPad. So we're gonna get some sort of new iPad Pro on the 11 inch and 12.9 inch. I don't think we're gonna get a 14.1 inch iPad Pro. Maybe eventually we will. And then with the 10th gen iPad, it's just gonna finally fit into the new iPad lineup more seamlessly, right? With the similar design with USB-C across the board. Also, it will not be Thunderbolt, keep that in mind. Thunderbolt cables alone are like 160 bucks for a good one. So it's not gonna be a Thunderbolt capable device, but it will be USB-C, which will open up a lot of options for peripherals on that 10th gen iPad. But that's gonna do it for this video, everybody. If you guys did make it to the end, leave a little dolphin in the comments down below and leave some comments down below of what you guys expect, what you would want out of an M2 iPad Pro in order to upgrade. Which iPad are you coming from? Are you gonna hold off still if the M2 iPad Pro isn't everything that you thought it would be? Let me know in the comments down below and also let me know how you use your iPad. Is it something that you just use on the couch as a throw around tablet, as a throw around computer? Or do you use it for productivity work, to run a business, to actually use it for the Microsoft Office suite, or do you use it for creative tasks like I do? Let me know in the comments below. But if you guys wanna watch some more videos on iPadOS, iOS, or macOS, click on one of these right here and stay tuned. We have a really good video on the iPhone 14 versus the iPhone 13 Pro Max coming up real soon. But until next time, I'm Fernando. Peace out, everybody. I'm out. This iPad, best thing ever created.